Just another sad love song wrecking my brain like crazy. Guess I'm all torn up, be it fast or slow. It doesn't let go or shake me. And it's all because of you. <laughs> oh my gosh, I hope you guys are good. Welcome back to another video. And this week we are in the BMW X1 S Drive 18D, <laughs> which is a bit of a mouthful. So yeah, we're going to get into the review. If you are new here and it's your first time watching this channel, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and welcome. Welcome to the family of Buma Um, I hope you guys enjoy. So you know the drill, outside, inside, and then we talk about it. Cool. So let's start off with the exterior of the BMW X1. The X1 actually, for me personally, when I first got acquainted with it, which is years back before I got into the industry, I think it launched 15 years ago, right? Um, and that model, those older models, I was like, who in their right mind would buy this thing? Why don't you just get an X3? This thing looks weird. Got a Nesna shape, right? It was just this out here, this odd looking vehicle that I really wasn't impressed with at the time. I was just like, what is this thing? And yeah, and then the X2 also came. I think I was already in the industry at the time. I was still already a, a reviewer and I saw. The X2 came and I was like, no, 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 no. X1 and X2, I would never buy them. And then I had the honor of being invited to the launch of the LCI 3 Series and obviously of the X1. And when I saw it at first, the first thing that came into my mind, I was like, this looks like Timon from Lion King. You see the meerkat? It looks like that because it has these big eye, these big headlamps that have like a bit of a wing, you know, that comes into the, the bonnet or the, or the hood of the vehicle. And it's, it's, it's very imposing. It's very upright also. It's like it's sitting like this, <laughs> which I find to be really, really cute. So the exterior of the vehicle for me is absolutely a winner. Um, it looks nice. It has a very boxy shape to it. You know, all these lines and all the, it, it works very well. You know, the large headlamps, you know, the chrome bits because this is the X line. Um, so you can go up and get an M Sport package, which is about 40K extra. This one is... Um, it's, a, it's the entry basically into the diesel range, which is the X-Line, which I find to be a very nice one. You get like chrome bits all around the vehicle, which actually give it a more off-roady look, which I find to be really, really cool. And the rear also, the lights at the rear look cool, you know, very, very, like all these lines, very sharp lines going on across the body of the vehicle. So on the exterior, I'm absolutely impressed. With. Moving on to the interior, like I said earlier, it's this is the X-Line derivative. So when you go to the BMW configurator, it starts with the 18i, which is the petrol, and then when you swipe left or right, whatever phone wave it is, because I don't know. <laughs> um, when you do that, it takes you to the 18d, so it starts with X-Line and m -Sport. So this is the X-Line, which is the entry. So there's not much going on in terms of niceties and that M-Spec and all the, the detailing and stuff like that. So it's a very, very simple, very clean interior. Um, I do love the steering wheel. I, I kind of like the steering wheel over the 3 Series steering wheel. That bulky one, is I'm not a huge fan of it. I like this one. It's a bit, you know, it's a bit sexier for me um, to also move around with and maneuver also, with. Also, the infotainment system is quite cool. Um, I love this curved display that BMW is now encompassing. So they have this new um, infotainment system with this new technology. The only thing that's irritating me a bit about this infotainment system is the fact that everything is touchscreen. There are no functional or conventional buttons. Um, that you, one would actually be accustomed to because even with the climate menu, this aircon and everything, I have to access it using the touchscreen thing, which I find to be so boring. So it uses a, it uses a 10.7 inch infotainment system uh, screen and the digital cluster in front of me is 10.25 inches, which I, which it's, it's really cool to look at. It's very nice, very intuitive, very easy to use. The only thing that I think is missing is just some buttons. So all I need in here are just function like function buttons you know like a maybe a volume knob or something like that you have this floating center console here that actually does almost all where your where all your gear you where your gear selector is so you have your reverse and whatever whatever the start um the start button is also here and the hazards are also down here which is also a bit of an odd placement um i'm used to hazards being in arms reach so if anything happens i can just stretch my hand but now they're here i don't know but it kind of makes a bit of sense because you're resting your arm on this thing almost the whole time as you're driving so kind of makes a little bit of sense but i still find it to be a very 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 peculiar and you obviously have 
Harman Kardon, you have your Harman Kardon sound system, which is one of my personal favorite sound systems. And everything about this car is actually very, very nice. Yes, the roof lining is a bit beige because it's the entry, right? It's the X-line derivative. Um, so obviously the, the, it's not a very comprehensive spec. And actually it's very refreshing being in a test car that actually isn't like fully, fully kitted with all the, like, which is just very simple and basic. I mean, this is a spec I could personally live with, you know? So you also have that, you have the large sunroof over here, you have a lot of space at the back. The legroom in the rear is absolutely stunning. I managed to get in there and sit quite uh, comfortably. You also have um, the, the, the rear seats also um, retract and what is it? What is, what? Like my English is running away from me. <laughs> the, like you can adjust, sorry, you can adjust. <laughs> retract. You can adjust um you can adjust the seats at the rear you know um but obviously in the m-spec they recline this one they don't recline so you can you can just adjust them so in terms of the interior also very impressed with it quality materials all around and that's what we know bmw for you know one of the best best quality interiors you can find in any german marquee so kudos to them for getting it so right also the boot space is actually very 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 oh guys i look so young oh guys has style it makes me look so young <laughs> Anyway, I'm deviating. <laughs> I'm deviating. Sorry. Matches at hand. Boot space. Right. The boot space in here is actually very, very great. Uh, managed to fit quite a lot of things, quite a lot of luggage, um, a lot of supplies that I needed uh, uh, during the week that I've had it. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with the boot space. And I think that this would be a very, very good offer and probably uh, top of my list. Um, for small families. So the BMW X1 in this diesel um, variant is powered by a 2 litre turbo diesel engine that produces 110 kilowatts and 316 newton meters of torque, giving it a very punchy and a very healthy, healthy, healthy response um, when you're putting your foot down and when you're driving the vehicle. Um, it's very nice on the highway, very easy to overtake also. Um, t like, it's a very, very nice and planted car. And for a diesel, you know, I, I think we all think BMW diesels are one of the loudest. Actually, not as loud as, as it is inside. The cabin insulation is absolutely amazing. I think it's a, they crafted it well. Um, noise insulation is quite good. There is, however, a lot of road noise. And I think I blame it on the tires. The tires in here, it gives the car a lot of road noise. But other than that, in terms of, cabin insulation and how they built it that's very very good so the drive is quite commendable so on a full tank of diesel when the vehicle arrived um for me um it was sitting at 930 kilometers so almost a thousand kilometers from this tank i have subsequently done 500 k's um in past few few days and i still have 478 kilometers of range and i am doing 6.1 liters to the hundred um, I think BMW claims about five, round about five. So uh, my foot is a little bit heavy. Um, <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. But in terms of frugality and fuel economy, this is absolutely amazing. So that means Jorge, on a full tank, you can probably get to Durban, Hoodspread. Maybe you can push it and try and get to flipping. What is the end of Limpopo and Musina? You know, I've always wanted to do Musina on a tank. I want to try that. I want to try to go to Musina on a tank. That would be dope. Or oh, Cape Town. You know, you can probably do Cape Town in this on a tank, on one tank. So in terms of fuel economy and things like that, it's absolutely, um, it's absolutely very, very, very economical. And like I said, the drive is very commendable. Uh, it's very, very nice. Uh, so I think you would enjoy it on a daily. And now we come to the pricing and the full verdict. So the pricing of this, the BMW X1 S Drive 18D. By the way, let me just give you some information. So when you see X Drive, on BMW, that means four wheel drive. You see X, so Haley X, one, two, three, four, X, all wheel drive, all wheel, four wheel drive. It's all the wheels working together. S drive means just the front two wheels. A fr this is a front wheel drive kind of car, right? Not kind of car, it is a front wheel drive car. So this is front wheel drive, all right? So it's the X1 S drive 18D. So when you get, when you're configuring your car and, want to, and you're going to BMW and wanna buy this, they have the X line. The X line is 815,000 Rand. And if you want to add the M Sport package that I spoke about earlier, which gives you a front bucket seats, you obviously get the black roof lining, you get a bit of a bigger screen, you have all the nice touches of M and the badging and the detail around the car, even the steering is gonna change for you. You are looking at paying an extra 40,000 Rand, which for me doesn't really, isn't really necessary. This spec as it is, is very comprehensive. At 815,000 Rand, this car, the X-Line is fine. You don't need all the niceties, especially if it's not doing anything to performance. Um, 
I don't think you need the M Sport. Um, obviously, if it's for visual appeal and you're someone who's very big on that, then sure, go for the M Sport. But I think I can survive with this X line. I do, however, do have some quarrels with the white roof lining. You guys know that I'm not a fan, but in here it's not too bad. And I think I'm warming up to them because the white roof lining, what I like about it, just opens up the car more. It makes you feel like you have more space. Like it just makes the car feel a bit bigger as opposed to a black roof lining that kind of cocoons you and just holds you in, if you get what I mean, you know. So this roof lining and this whole setup is actually really, really nice. So I don't mind it. Um, so the M Sport is all up to you. It's basically... Um, a very subjective thing if you want it then you can get it but i think the x line is absolutely fine Ugh, you don't need all the nice all those other fancy things and in this segment this car is playing against rivals such as the audi q3 you have the volvo xc40 and the mercedes-benz gla and out of all of those i've only driven three so far so it's x1 uh xc40 and the gla and to be honest i would probably go to the x1 X1 for me, I feel like BMW gives a very robust, uh, comprehensive base package, like the X line here. In Kilo Abona, um, base, pa uh, base pack, uh, poverty spec, yeah, Audi, Horekomola Pilobian, car Audis, when it comes, you, for you to, to enjoy an Audi, you need to kit it out to probably that, that proper, proper, proper S line thing because, ah, they are base packs, yo, Nikomola Pilo, I can't do it. <laughs> so, in terms of Audi's base bags, I wouldn't do it. And their extras are absolutely insane. The Audi's extras, are you will pay out of your buttocks. You will pay so much money. So I think in terms of uh, a value for money perspective, BMW makes sense. The Mercedes also, I do like it. If you get the AMG spec, even Avant Garde is also fine. The only reason why I'm not kind of leaning to the GLA, I've driven the GLA, I like it. But I feel like you get a better driving experience here. And for me, the GLA looks like a soccer ball. It's so rounded. Like, it round. Though, like, I know definition. It's just round. Even the new it's just, it's all. Eh. Ogar ba tseru ba file ba natle ba twara. And then, ba na ba bupa GLA wan chalwain. I'm sorry. I love Mercedes. I really do love Mercedes. But when it comes to them, I'd probably just go to GLB. You know? But here... I could actually give the X1 a fighting chance and I could really, really vouch for it. And also, the X1 is not like uh, a car you buy because you can't afford the X3. Same with the X3. It's not a car you buy because you can't afford the X5. Each of these vehicles have their own identity and each of these vehicles appeal to a certain person. Um, and I think the X1 is absolutely a good product especially if maybe you are um, a small family maybe you have you're expecting a child you know trying to move from your hatchback and you have the 800k to get into something like this i'd really 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 recommend it probably one of the i would actually put this as one of the nicest push gifts you guys can get your partners it would be a very very proper push gift it's under a million rand it's spec decently it's nice to drive on a daily you get a lot of uh, range on your tank what more do you want? You have Harman Kardon. What more would you want? ISO fixes at the back, you know. So it's a very good family vehicle, right? Um, albeit I'm a very big X3 kind of girl. I am an absolute lover of the X3. I could live with this. Fully, 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 I could live with this. So I do think that the X1 is a very, very compelling package. And I think it is actually, out of all the vehicles that I've mentioned, one of the best looking also. Very unorthodox looks, very new looks, very, very fresh um very futuristic you know very you know bmw has this thing of making us doubt their cars when we see them on paper when we see them online but then once they are built and they come and they're all over you're like actually i love this car you know so to be honest i think the x1 is actually a very good car um not much to fault it on um yeah could be a bit of a long verdict so ultimately i do think that there are some, there's very nice things about it. Um, the, like I said, the only things that I'm not too impressed with is the fact that this whole infotainment system, this cluster, it's only touchscreen. I wish it had the, a, a few buttons and whatever. Um, but it's, it's also, I really do think that they've built something that's very good. And I think they've also captured a very new market, you know. Um, it's not just now oriented on families trying to get into an X3, they can get into this also. And yeah, really do think that this is the one to have. If you are more of a petrol person, then sure, try the um, 18i. I know diesel is a bit of a, the bad guy, especially in motoring terms. 
but I think diesel is more, it's, 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 it's much nicer to drive, especially in SUVs and the fuel economy in here will actually kind of just save you some coins. So I think look at the diesel, don't faff around with the M Sports and all those things. This is fine. It's all up to you at the end of the day. So yeah, guys, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and we are done with the X1. That rhymed. <laughs> Anyway, guys, I'd like to also proudly announce that I am a judge, a juror for the 2023-2024 Cars Awards. So I am excited. I am going to tell you guys which car is great and which one is not on a public platform. I've already been doing it on a public platform, but this is a more public, ah, public curb. This is like a national platform, you know, like, you know, we are going to national platform. Like, Shangolota is going to see they're going to judge me do you understand no i'm going to judge but you anyway guys i'm a judge okay i'm going to judge <laughs> i'm going to judge cars uh at cars awards you know so i'm super excited about that and thank you so much i couldn't have been you know recognized if it wasn't for your guys' support and you guys just following and being part of the journey so thank you so much thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, we're almost at 10,000. Please do keep on subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one. Guys, bye-bye, bye-bye. Yeah, boom, I say bye-bye. Yo, ha, bye-bye.